Hey guys, and uh, welcome to part 4 of my tutorial series on building an Ardennes diorama. As I uh, spoiled you guys in the last uh, episode, number 3, that tackled building a tree, um, we will today tackle the ground cover and creating a lifelike and realistic um, forest ground with grass and all kinds of uh, material. Um, I will uh, take you over to my bench in a second and I will show you guys the materials that I will be using and then we will apply them to the base and uh, I hope for the best and uh, I hope that you guys will find what I will show you guys in a second uh, helpful. So let me just take you over to the bench and uh, we will see where we go from there. Alright guys, let's um, do a quick rundown of all the materials that we will be using for this uh, dio piece and let's start out by the most important aspect which is static grass. Um, I'm using a pre-mixed version of this, this is from the German railroad company called Nock, and this comes with small parts of debris. Actually this is like a alpine... Uh, Grass, so this is normally used for mountains, but I think it uh, act, uh, actually can be used for everything because let's face it every uh, forest or every um, bigger grass field has some debris in it, so this is the base material I'm going to be using and um, the, uh, the backs of this uh, stuff are quite uh, cheap to get, so a very useful uh, acquisition. Um, I also will be using this. Um, this is from the same company from Nock, and it looks to me as if it's just shredded wood. Um, but you can use this for uh, the um, for pine needles that have fallen off from trees or other small parts of decayed forest. Um, that's quite quite handy. That's coming in quite handy here. Um, I also will be using some products from the Scenic Factory again, um, Forest Drawer, um, the Autumn Tone Mix, um, it's a pre-mixed forest floor ground cover, really reddish I think, so it, it might need a bit toning down with the other materials, but uh, quite a good thing to have, and I'm going to be using those. Those are, I think, um, dried birch semen, um, seeds, not semen, Jesus Christ, dried birch seeds, um, that can function as fallen leaves. I also will be using the leftovers from the Scenic, uh, Factory Scenic Mud Forest Kit, for example, pine sticks, twigs, moss, uh, fern, and that wrench material, so I can um, portray fallen down twigs or branches or maybe trees, which would happen in, in a forest. And I'm probably going to be using those. Um, those are Scenic Factory, uh, no not Scenic Factory, uh, Green Line Grass Tuft Strips. Um, I guess all of you have seen those grass tufts before, but um, they all are the same in length and those vary right here as you can see they are short ones and long ones and you can cut them into, p into the pieces to the ne necessary length. Um, what else do we need? Well, we need to fix the stuff to the, to the base somehow so I'm going to be using water to dilute down my white glue so I can then just brush it on to the surface and then put down the first layer and then I will use spray glue to fix the other layers later on, but I probably won't be using the spray glue on the video because it's quite a mess and I don't want my camera anywhere near the spray glue, but I will just, I will, I will tell you guys how to do it once everything is in place for the spray glue. So as we have now seen all this stuff that we need for the diorama, let me just put on rubber gloves because rubber gloves might be useful as well because you don't want all this stuff to stick to your hands. And then I'll take you over to the diorama and we start putting down the first layer. So, see you guys in a bit. Alright guys. All set. 
got my gloves on, got my Thio base in front of me, got my white glue, uh, my water to the little white glue, need a, an old brush, always use an old brush because it might be the case that you won't be able to reuse the brush after you're done. Um, and I think we are going to start with this corner of the diorama where there's no forest. So this is going to be just a grass field. Um, so we will not have all that much of the inner forest stuff uh, sitting around there. And I actually think we might start out with one of those grass strips here. Because I think that it would be would look cool to have one of those sitting right there. Nah, nah, not really. Right. Um, you gotta know, every time I do this, I don't have a pre-planned way of how my ground should look. I'm just intuitive here. Uh, I, I just go by the minute, and if I think something looks good, I'll just do it. And you want to be careful with the white glue. Don't get it all over your bench like I just did. I want to dilute it really well. Then you just take the brush and you step it on there. You can be deliberate, just don't, if you have, like I do, uh, wood lying on there, which was probably quite the mistake to put it on there before putting on the the grass. Um, you just want to be careful not to cover any spots that should not be covered with the grass later on. Okay, this is a bit too diluted, so we add a bit more glue to our diluted glue. We need a certain uh, amount of glue to hold the stuff down, and if it's too watery, certain areas will not be sticky enough to, to get the stuff down. This looks much better now. You of course always want to have a certain kind of um, basic ground for your cover, probably something brownish, just uh, to make sure that um, yeah, nothing shines through uh, if you use like DAS or uh, Fimo Air because the color of that stuff, if it shines through, would look hideous. And then we just carefully Trying to not get anything on our wood. Add the, the static grass mix first. And try to move it where we need we, we 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 try to not have too many of those 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 rocks of the debris in there because um, if it's too many it looks a bit uh, overdone. And we want to of course um, have it sit snug and, and tight to the road and maybe have some overlap with the road. Um, if you ha can't access knock, um, I would suggest looking for, um, oh, what's the name of the company? Damn it. Okay. Uh, Woodland Scenics. They make some, some nice uh, ground cover stuff too. So you can, uh, and I think they are better available in the states than the knock stuff. Um, and here's a another thing for you guys: if you're not happy with the way uh, your stuff sticks, just take the glue onto your brush and then stifle it on, because that will help you get a bit more of extra stickiness. And again, don't glue your bench. All right. And um, if you're not an experienced 
ground cover guy, I, I would suggest you mask off your diorama frame because otherwise you might have some, some static grass on your diorama frame. So as you can see, we got the first corner of our diorama now uh, covered in uh, grass. So we can now go and add a second layer of stuff. Um, which is this stuff. Although, no, it's not this stuff because it's not in our forest, but it's this stuff. It's the um, decayed stuff. Because we want to tone this this green down a bit because this looks a bit greenish right now, and we want it to be a bit more fall, looking fall like. You just take small amounts of this stuff and just staple it on. Don't want it too crowded, and it automatically tones down the the greenness of the. The stuff we had in there first so this is done all right guys um i will now do the other side the same way as i did this side on time lapse and we will then come back once i um work up and then and, and, uh work up the layers of ground cover over there so let me speed this up and i'll talk to you guys in a minute or two guys as I told you um, now both of the sides of the dio are at the same uh, s well uh, step of um, ground cover work up you always want to check out that your street isn't too oh, well grassed up because we do not want that to happen we only want the grass to be where it's supposed to be, which is not on our road. Um, so now it's the second step, which would be working our way up in creating a more realistic look of uh, forest floor underneath the tree. So this time we take the Scenic Factory Forest Floor Autumn Mix ground cover. And again, we just use just the slightest bit. And work it in there that way toning the the um the knock stuff down even more and adding color variation to the ground cover you just want to use uh the slightest bit you don't want to overuse the stuff because if you overuse it it will look well red which you don't want you just want this to be natural both in look and appearance that was redundant, I know. And you want to pay some special attention, especially to the to the corners here, where maybe you didn't reach on the first go with the knock stuff. Okay, so now that we have that down, we can now shift our focus to stuff like fallen leaves. And add a couple of fallen leaves to the ground. Once again, we do not want to be overly uh, aggressive with that and don't want to overdo it. Just a couple here and a couple there. Just spread them around. Just make it look like yeah, natural. And maybe it, with those leaves, you can you can even go as far as to to, to have some of them sitting on the tr uh, on the on the, on, the, on the road because well, they would get on the road too. Right, so that's that. Now, it's the next step. As I told you guys, we will be using some of the um, material I have left over from my scenic mud kit, like fern. Well, trees lose branches. They quite frequently do. So, the ground around trees would be littered in a couple of branches. You do not once again this is just for this especially is one of those steps that you don't want to overdo. Because let's face it, those branches 
with the green stuff wouldn't be branches with the green stuff and the leaves for long, but they would lose those leaves and turn into this. Their branch material. So we open this up. And we add some of those dead branch sticks. And we, we are very deliberate with this. We don't want this to be to look bland or like have the same amount of stuff lying everywhere. Because nature isn't deliberate. Nature is uh nature is deliberate. Nature isn't a plant process. So once we do once we're done with those, we go over to the bigger ones. This is the twig back. That actually has some some smaller branches like this, so we can put this down there. And then we take some of the smaller ones here and place them here, down there, inside this out of this. Okay, so that's the twigs. As I, as I said, guys, we do not want to be overly aggressive with that stuff and have tons of this stuff all over the diode. No, we just want this to be. Very subtle. Here, a bit of it here, a bit of it there, a bit of it everywhere. Now that that's done, there are only two bags of stuff left here. One is the pine sticks, which I sadly took out. The, the big ones all out for my big diorama, but that's not a problem because I have a ton of small ones left here. And pine sticks, uh, guys, you can get everywhere. You can find them outside. Just go, just go outside. You can find pine sticks, and you don't want to overdo the pine stick stuff. And then we only have some dead branch material left. I'm sorry, guys. I don't think you guys can see this actually quite good here. Um, and we add one or two dead branches. Once again, not trying to be. Overboard here, just trying to, to add some realistic view to it. All right, so basically, that's it. The only thing we would have left now to do is applying our spray glue. Um, I'm using the um, the Lux Materials spray glue. Let me try to, to get you guys a bit closer here so you guys can uh, actually see the effects. But I will have some, some pictures for you in a second so that you guys can see what it looks like. Um, we will use spray glue to fix all this stuff. You want to be careful. The problem that I have now is that I put the tree in place first, which you normally shouldn't do. You should have the pin of the tree, work your way around, then stick the tree in at the end once you have fixed all the other stuff. I did it the, the other way around now because of, uh, well, logistics. Normally you shouldn't do it. I did it. Um, I will work my way around it. I will still be able to fix all that stuff. Maybe I have to use a different technique than spray glue this time, and but I have to thin the glue down even more, and then I'll just uh, pour it on. It's a it's a possibility. It destroys a bit of the surface structure, but. So I would have to, to add a bit more of the stuff on top of that, but that's not a problem. Um, as I said, spray glue it, um, leave it to cure for a day. The problem with most spray glues is that they try uh, dry glossy, which you do not want. You want a matte finish, unless you are going to cover the thing in snow anyways. Which I don't know whether or not I'm going to do this. But um, this is um, how I do ground cover. As I said, there will be a couple of pictures that will now follow that show you guys exactly how the ground cover now looks after I applied all the stuff to the base. Um, yeah, it's that simple, honestly. And it didn't take me that long. It took me like 10 minutes to do the entire thing. Um, yeah, as I said, um, this is step four. There might be step four, five if I decide to put snow on this, but I'm not sure. If I do, I'll come back, I'll show you guys in step 5 the snow. If not, I'll show you guys in step 5 the finished diorama with the vehicle and the figures in place. So this is part 4. Thank you guys for watching. This is Hollow Modeling. Always remember the force with you. Bye guys.